So today I want to share with you some advice, I suppose, on the subject of being self-taught, right? I've always had a, an interest in drawing and it's something that I've always found the time for throughout all stages of my life, you know, going through school, I would always be drawing in class and when I got home, and even when I left school, when I went to university, I studied architecture, but I still would be drawing in my free time. I think that this YouTube channel encourages me to keep it up and also learn new things as well, but I've got a, a few things to say that might help Help you if you in the same way as I do teach yourself I've written down some headings on this piece of paper so I'll go through this and talk about each of these the first point that I have written down here is to have a routine that allocates time to practice and then I have consistency in brackets and that's what this one is really about it's about consistency that really is key you know, I've, I've talked about it in previous videos, but I work full time, right? I have a, a nine to five job like most people. And you might think, well, how on earth does he find the time to do YouTube and all of this? Well, how I do it is, is by having a, a set routine every day. And it's a routine that involves enough time for me to draw each day. I tend to draw and work on videos for around three hours a day, right? I wake up at five, work until eight, then I bike to work to be there at nine. Now, three hours isn't that much, but three hours every day for a week, that is a lot. What does that add up to? Three times seven, like 21, 21 hours? That's almost three full working days, and so that's plenty of time for me to practice and work on what I want to before I have to deal with my other responsibilities. And I've been doing this for around four years now, since I was at university, you know, I'd have to find time around that. And now that I'm working, I still have to find time. And that's what a lot of people struggle with, finding the time, but sometimes it just means sacrificing something else. I go to bed at 9 o'clock to wake up early, which, I mean, it, it's like being a kid again. <laughs> I don't want an early bedtime, but it's what I have to do. In addition to a, a routine that gives you time to practice, it's also helpful to plan what to do during that time. Because you only have a, a limited number of hours of each day, you know, you want to be making the most out of that time, right? Now, I assume most of you will just be making art, right? You, you won't be making YouTube videos or doing a lot of the things that are, in, are involved with that, the things that I have to do. Instead, you'll, you'll probably be working on your art, but even so, it, it would still be helpful to set yourself a goal, right? Perhaps you want to finish one piece every week. Well, eventually, you'll get an idea of how fast you work, and you'll be able to set these deadlines which can help motivate you to get stuff done. I'm repeating most of the things you hear from those typical self-help gurus and although I don't want to sound like that, I do think that it can be helpful, at least it is for me. But the next thing I've wrote down on this list isn't really advice, it's more so something that I've realised over the years and that's that learning how to draw, you know, teaching yourself also teaches you how to learn. I just mentioned that I have a day job, right? Well, essentially, I work as a, an architect slash designer. I don't really have a title, but the job involves using a, a lot of different software. You know, programs like AutoCAD, Revit, Rhino, and more recently, I've been using something called Grasshopper, which is a, an extension to Rhino. It's a, a tool for scripting algorithms, visual programming, you know, that sort of stuff. So there's a, a lot to it and I decided to learn this around a year ago now because it's something that is very valuable and in turn would make me a, a more valuable employee, right? But the reason I bring this up here, you're probably wondering how it's relevant. Well, the process in learning how to use that, I found it to be very similar to the process of learning how to draw. And there's a, a few other things in life that relate to that as well. Now obviously I'm familiar with that process and I assume most of you are as well, you know, learning how to draw, it's a, a demanding task. As I said earlier, you have to practice consistently and throughout that time you're dealing with the frustrations of not knowing how to do something. 
This is even more relevant when you are teaching yourself, where you have no mentor or anyone to guide you. You're kind of left to your own devices, trying to figure things out. Thankfully, the internet exists, which I'll discuss later, but it's up to you to do the work. Learning how to draw has given me the confidence to learn anything else in life and I'm comfortable with not being able to do something. You know, I expect a lot of ups and downs and, and that's where most people give up as well, right? As soon as they start to figure out they are not good at something, they decide it's not for them. But if you really want to do something, then that in itself is what often keeps you coming back. Anyways, next on this list is immerse yourself in the subject. And so this is where I was going to discuss the internet for example because that's really your teacher here. Most of what I do I have learned how to do from learning online. There's so much information out there posted by people who are the best at what they do. And honestly, if you have the capacity to learn, you know, the understanding and discipline to teach yourself, then for me at least, I, I begin to question the value of going to university and whatnot. I understand that some people need that guidance which going to university might provide, but these days, th there's courses online that are just as good, if not better. I remember when I was younger, looking at all of these drawings created by other artists online, and it, it gave me this realisation of, of what is possible. It's like once you see someone else doing something, it kind of gives you the motivation to do that yourself. I know that creating art digitally these days is probably more common than working traditionally. Some would consider me to be a, a boomer in the art world, but you know, I'm not trying to create pencil drawings for a job, although you can do. I'm I also do it out of enjoyment. I, I love drawing and whenever you enjoy doing something, you obviously do it more and in turn you get better at it. Now, if it's drawing that you love, then you're probably immersed in the subject already. If you want to learn, then you're likely watching all of these types of videos and looking at other artists online. You know, all of that influences your own work. As I say, whenever you see someone else do something, in this case creating amazing artwork, then that often gives you some motivation to get to that level and do the same. At least that's the, the best way to think about it. Anyways, in addition to the internet, there's also a lot of really good books that you can use to guide you on your journey of learning how to draw. Most of the books that I find to be the most useful ones are, are ones that I saw recommended by other artists online. And I really appreciate the books that I own. I made a video the other week discussing some of the, the best books that I have. And again, as I say, as someone who is self-taught, these have acted as my guide, pointing me in the right direction, making sure I'm learning the right things. So get some books, get yourself a, an internet connection and just lock yourself away for a few hours. Finally, the last thing that I have written down here is to do it for fun and see where it goes. I suppose this is just a, a general attitude that you might want to adopt if you are learning something. You know, I assume most of you watching are artists who also do it as a hobby as opposed to a, a means of earning an income and you likely do it because you enjoy doing it. it it's fun right well keep doing it and along the way you know set up a website maybe where you can post your work do all the, the typical things us artists do to get your work out there and if something happens by doing that then it's a bonus right i mean you're creating art anyways and if someone suddenly wants to buy one of your drawings then that's great but you're not relying on that most of what I do in my day to day are things that I'd likely do anyways, even if I wasn't getting paid to do it. I'd still be drawing, I'd still be, you know, even learning all of this software and the programs that I use at work. I'm interested in that stuff and so I'd likely still be involved in it within my life somehow. I never expected to be on YouTube making these videos and talking to all of you. It kind of grew out of a, a general interest in both YouTube and drawing. One day I thought I'd make a video, I enjoyed it and so I made another and now years later I'm still making videos so do it for fun. There's a, a lot of benefits in doing it for that reason first as opposed to any monetary reasons but see what happens. 
So those are a few things that I wanted to share with you. I know this wasn't your typical drawing tutorial, but I hope that it can still be of some value to you. If you did enjoy this, then please leave a like and let me know in the comments below. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.